Hi, we're going to go through the demo of the DevOps policies support view. For this, we are going to demo a few scenarios. We'll go through the users and roles and then the demo steps that will follow. We have five different users that we may be impersonating during the demo. Those are Adele, Christy, Debra, Megan, and Diego. Adele is member of Group AD, uh, Group Performance Monitor. Uh, Christy is member of the AD Group Security Auditor. Those groups will be assigned roles SQL Performance Monitor and SQL Security Auditor in Porview, respectively. Then Debra is IAM Owner and Microsoft Porview Data Source Admin. Megan is Microsoft Porview Policy Author. She will be creating the policies and then Diego is member of SQL AD admin, which is a group of uh, people that hold privilege accounts in SQL. As far as the steps, we'll first show what are the prerequisites uh, that are needed before policies get created, uh, both on data sources and Microsoft Purview. Then Megan, as the policy author, will create a policy to assign role SQL Performance Monitor to that group AD group uh, performance monitor. And this will happen in the scope of an Arc enabled SQL Server. Then Adele, which is part of that group, uh, will prove that she has access to that uh, Arc enabled SQL Server. Megan will then create another DevOps policy, but this time, instead of doing it on a data source, she will do it on a whole resource group. And this is the resource group for finance. And uh, she will assign role SQL security auditor to AD group security auditor. And then Christy, which is part of that AD group, will confirm that she has access to an Azure SQL database that is part of that finance resource group. We're now in the demo in the portal impersonating user Debra, who is IEM owner for these uh, SQL resources. So she is IEM owner for this resource group in the subscription, uh, which has finance type data sources, SQL servers. Uh, there are three different Azure SQL servers, which is which their databases, and then there is an Arc enabled SQL Server, SQL Server 2022. As we said, Debra holds here IAM owner on this whole resource group. And then uh, to take a look at the configuration that is necessary on the data sources, let's take one of these Azure SQL servers. So the first thing that needs to happen here is you must create an identity, uh, a system assigned managed identity for this Azure SQL Server. This needs to be set to on. Second thing is you must create uh, uh, and set an AAD admin uh, for this uh, Azure SQL Server. We have set it to uh, SQL AAD admins is a group of people that will have privileged access over these resources. So we should be careful with who we give this uh, to. Uh, Diego is part of this. The third thing that needs to happen uh, if you follow the documentation is um, you need to go and with PowerShell invoke a couple of different uh, Azure REST methods. One is a put, is setting external policy based authentication property to true. And the second is a get uh, that we are going to use to verify that after the put, uh, in fact, the property was set to true. Okay. Once that you, you complete that, you have uh, then enable this. Uh, uh, um, Azure SQL Server to work with Porview. Now let's take a look at the configuration that is necessary on the Arc enabled SQL Server. We're still using Debra's profile to take a look at it. So for the Arc enabled SQL Server, 
you need to go here on the portal to Azure Active Directory. And these steps are incremental to onboarding the SQL Server to Arc. So once you have done that, you have to come to the portal, set up an AD admin here, which we are going to make this SQL AD admins group admin. Then you must configure a SQL Server service certificate. We have selected one here. We have to configure a SQL Server app registration. And then once you do that, you can check um, if the resource is governed. So now we're gonna jump to Purview and then we'll refresh this. So, so now we're going to go to Purview as Debra. So let's check uh, the data map that has been created here by the data source admins. There are three different collections, sales, marketing, and finance. We'll expand here, finance. <coughs> collections are just folders where you can put uh, different data sources or different resources. In this case, for this finance uh, collection, we have put in here the three different uh, Azure SQL servers, uh, SQL Server 1, 5, and 7, and then the Arc Enable SQL Server that we took a look. And we have also registered the whole resource group. So, you know, the registration happens by clicking here. You can select different sources. We will not expand on this, but, you know, there is Azure SQL database, there is uh, Arc Enabled SQL Server, and the way you would register a resource group is here by looking at this one. Once that happens, then an IEM owner that also holds the um, Purview data source admin, either in the collection or in the um, uh, at root collection level, needs to come and move the data use management to enable. We have done it here for the whole resource group. And that means um, all of these different data sources that are inside this resource group then are enabled to, for policies to, to be um, created uh, in Purview against those uh, data sources. Uh, there are two sets of permissions, as we discussed. IEM owner uh, is needed on the ARM path. Debra has that. And then the second permission that you need to have is uh, on the Purview side, you need to be data source admin. Okay, so let's take a look at those permissions inside Purview. We're going to navigate to the finance collection and we're gonna take out the role assignments. And we see here that Debra has been made data source admin for this particular collection. So then she should be able to enable data use management on this resource group, okay? When that happens, then data use management is set to enable and grayed out uh, because all of these are children of this uh, resource group. So the data use management setting of the parent uh, kind of trumps the one for the underlying children. Let's take a look at this uh, Arc SQL resource. So if we go and hit edit, we'll see that is also part of the resource group. Therefore, data use management is enabled. There is an application ID here, uh, which is the application ID that is uh, related to the app registration that was used uh, to enable the policies on the data source side. Uh, it can be refreshed just in case that app registration was swapped in the future. Once that happens, let's go back and let's take a look at the Arc SQL resource. If you hit check for Microsoft Purview Governance, this will be refreshed and then 
automatically it will populate the Microsoft Purview endpoint uh, where you register this data source, which is this one, and then it should match the app registration that you see on the Purview side. With that, then the uh, Arc SQL resource is ready to receive policies from Purview. We have logged in to Purview with another different user, Megan, who is going to be policy author. Uh, and that role needs to be configured at root collection level. So that means about the three different collections that we saw. So scroll down until you see policy author. This is where Megan should be to be able to create DevOps policies. Now Megan is going to go to the DevOps policies experience. And we don't have any policies here. So the thing that we're going to do is make sure that uh, Adele, who is part of the Performance Monitor AED group, does not have access right now, just to prove that you know, we are starting with a clean state. So we are going to log in as Adele. And she does not have connect right now because there is no policy giving her connect. So then, again, as Megan, let's create a policy here. So we click on New Policy. We select Data Source SQL Server on Azure Arc. We have here our SQL Server. And <clears throat> this is the path. We're going to grant AAD Group Performance Monitor role SQL performance monitor and we know Adele is part of that group so we just save and that automatically publishes the policy and then that policy gets communicated within five minutes to the SQL server so to expedite the process I have here I'm logging in under this tab as the local sysadmin and I'm going to execute a policy refresh which then will ensure that the policies get loaded into the SQL Server. So then let's take a look at uh, Adele. So let's uh, try to connect again as Adele And um, let's try to execute one of those queries for DMVs that should give Adele access to uh, virtual file stats. So she is able; she was able to connect first. She, then she's able to execute this DMV. This one is a DMV that uh, shows wait states, wait types, and times. <coughs> So she's able to do that, but she should not be able to do anything else. Uh, she should not be able to access the um, security auditor type of DMVs. So she's getting a permission uh, error here because she doesn't have that permission. She should not be able to uh, access the user databases so we're going to try now to connect to a database and to execute this query here which is getting um, an error because she doesn't have that access but there are dmvs that are public and only require connect so she is able to do this here okay <clears throat> that shows that adele now has access we're back to purview where Megan is now going to create a policy on the whole resource group. 
So that policy will apply to all the underlying data sources inside that resource group. The way Megan is going to do it uh, is different. We're going to showcase another way to do it. She's going to navigate to the data map, locate that uh, finance resource group that was previously registered with data use management enabled. Go to view details and she's going to click here on DevOps policy. And then she's going to select, uh, in this case, SQL Security Auditor. The path here is the subscription research group. We are going to then select the AD group that contains the security auditors, of which Christy is part. And uh, we're going to save. We're not going to yet save the policy. We're not going to yet publish it because we're going to demonstrate that at this point, Christy does not have yet the access. So to be able to do that, we're going to go and um, log in as Christy. And she does not have connect at this point. So let's go back to Purview. Let's save the policy. We're going to expedite uh, to avoid waiting up to five minutes for the policy to be published. So uh, we're going to execute here a command under the sysadmin or the AAD admin that is going to force the reload. So in this case, Diego is our DBA. That forces the full pool of policies from Porview in the Azure SQL Server. And now let's go back uh, and take a look at uh, Christy. Let's, let's try to connect as Christy. In this case, she was able to connect. So she should be able to execute anything related to the security auditor. So let's try this command. This command provides uh, information about the encryption keys. So she is able to see the key algorithm AES, the key length, uh, the encryption state, etc., for this database. Okay. Now let's try something related to performance monitor that she does not have access to. So in this case, this query that we saw before for the virtual file stat fails. The wait type, wait time uh, also fails because uh, Christy does not have the type of permission. Um, she is able to execute any publicly available DMVs that only require the connect, right? And she is not able to go and take a look at the contents of the user tables in the user databases. Okay. In case Megan needs to update the policies, she can come back and click on them and hit edit. And uh, once she does that, she can keep adding or removing uh, subjects here, additional, you know, groups. In this case, we had that policy for the performance monitor uh, on the Arc Enabled SQL Server. I'm going to hit cancel here. And in case she needs to go and take a look at um, when was the last time that this policy was changed or who last updated it? This information is present here when the policies are listed. To be able to delete a policy, she can come and select one or multiple policies and then hit delete. And that basically removes that access that uh, was granted and within five minutes that policy should be enforced at the data source or at the data sources in case uh, the policy was set on a subscription or resource group.